Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. In today's video, I'm having another look at the Toby 4C. Now, I've been asked by Toby to help them out a little bit here and create a sponsored tutorial video to basically help people work out how to best use the Toby 4C with Elite Dangerous. Now, the Toby 4C is an eye tracking hardware, which basically means that as you look around the screen, the hardware will detect where you're looking and move the camera accordingly and it also has integrated head tracking as well. You will have no doubt noticed that in nearly all my videos I actually use head tracking or eye tracking of some form and this is all done by the Toby 4C. Previously I was using the uh, Toby iX, the 4C is the newest device. Right then, let's have a quick look on how to set the Toby 4C up. Thing is, I'm sure if any of you have actually got the 4C, you'll have gone through most of this process anyway, but let's have a look at it at any rate. So I'm just going to bring me on there so you can see what's going on. And we look down here where the Toby eye tracking software is installed in the system tray. Now at the moment, I've only got it set up for guest. I've deleted my own profile. And what we're going to do is quickly create a new profile here. And this will show you how basically the Toby 4C is calibrated. And here, these are my eyes. And you can see as I move around, both uh, physically and side to side, you'll see how it does track my eyes. So let's calibrate my eyes. Got to look at each dot until they actually explode. So there goes the middle one. And I don't know there if you can see that my eyes moving on the camera. Hopefully there's enough detail there for that. And that's the three dots that pop to calibrate them and another three on a different uh, coordinate there. And that should give me some uh, calibration there for the uh, particular setup. So let's, uh, let's save that profile. And you can see down there it's now all set up. And if we turn on the gaze tracing, you'll see that as I look around the screen, it's actually following me quite well. Looking at getting started there, Looking at the little star up there, the sun, and looking down near the taskbar. Okay, so we'll turn that back off. And the thing that you are going to want, the most important thing, is the Toby Infinite Screen Software. This enables the uh, device to work with any game, or with any game that you're actually using at any particular time. It supports a number of games here, as you can see. And the one that we want, of course, is Elite Dangerous. So what we do here is browse to the... Uh, Elite Dangerous EXE. I'm on the public test server one here at the moment. It doesn't really matter what one you actually use. We've got the 32-bit version there and we've got the 64-bit version there. So I'm just going to stick to this at the moment because I'm playing on the uh, beta server but it doesn't really matter which one you actually use. So once that's set up, you want to set up your uh, settings. So the first one is for gaze tracking settings and this is for uh, your eye tracking and the setting I always use here is the extended view and we basically go with all the default settings on here you can see there's a number of settings here all of these I leave as they actually are by default this is for uh, eye, uh, eye tracking but what I do change are a couple of things so it's not entirely by default I turn the responsiveness down to 20% and I turn the speed down to 2 the rest I will leave, I leave exactly as they are if you want, you can change uh, the viewing angle limits so that you can actually change it so it doesn't see you beyond, or it doesn't allow interaction beyond uh, this angle. But again, I'll leave that at the default, which was 90 degrees, if we can get it back to 90 degrees. A bit fiddly. There we go. And uh, then we've got head tracking uh, settings. Now head tracking is completely separate from eye tracking. Eye tracking, as you saw when I put on the gaze tracking, I'll do that just once again here. That follows your gaze around the screen. You don't have to turn your head. You simply look at something, looking at pitch, looking at your, looking at Elite Dangerous, and again, looking at Elite Dangerous at the top there, and it will follow your eyes. It'll follow what you're looking at. Head tracking is very different. It works a bit like other head trackers, except here you don't need to wear any equipment and you don't need to use any infrared settings or anything like that. You simply turn your head up and down, left and right, and it will follow it. So head tracking, my settings for Elite Dangerous, I'll leave it on direct. Responsiveness, I'll leave at 100%. 
Speed. I'll turn this all the way up. Right up to 10. Exponent. Uh, we go through what exactly these mean a little bit later. I'll turn that to a 150. Inflection point down to 20. And this seems to give you a much better response. Especially when looking up. I found the uh, Toby 4C to have a little bit of a problem sometimes when you're looking up. What it does is sometimes cut off. We can avoid any problems like that by uh, turning the inflection point down I've found. Once at 20 it doesn't have any problem. Now start point is basically a dead zone. You can see down here there's a slight dead zone and that would be in the center of the screen. So when I turn my head a little bit like that there's a little bit of dead zone and when you turn back to the middle of the screen the camera will actually stop moving for a second until I turn my head to about here and then it will start moving again. Now I don't actually like that within Elite. I like smooth panning from left to right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so what we need to do is uh, turn the start point all the way down to zero and that removes any dead zone there and end point all the way up to one. So that gives you all my head tracking settings and control features. This is what enables or disables a feature. And as I've got a HOTUS here, um, we do a keybind there to enable or disable both eye tracking and head tracking and another keybind there to center it. Now I have made a request to Toby that uh, enabling and disabling head tracking and eye tracking should both be independent from each other. They say that's feedback they've had previously and something they are looking into. So hopefully that'll be something that comes in a future change to the software. But as it currently stands, you can only enable and disable the entirety of all forms of tracking on the 4C. So there we have it. Those are my settings. I'll post them in the uh, video description below and I may even link a bit of an image there so you can actually follow the settings as well if you want. So let's get back to Elite. Now you can use the head tracking and the eye tracking for just about any scenario in the game. It's not just a case that I use it from time to time, I do use the 4C the majority of the time and you'll have noticed that as I mentioned earlier in nearly all my videos I actually do use uh, the uh, eye tracking and this is precisely how I do all the head tracking, all the camera head tracking within the cockpit. So like I say you can use it in all manner of scenarios. You've already seen two uses for it here in the video so far. The first was locating a signal source within Super Cruise. It does make quite a bit of difference. And another use you can see right here is for cargo scooping. Now anyone who has used eye tracking or head tracking before will tell you that it is all about situational awareness. Being very much aware of what is around your ship. You can of course do this without the additional hardware. Elite Dangerous does have a wonderful UI and the radar there gives you a very good situational awareness and you can use if you're using an xbox pad for example one of the sticks to enable head look and if you're using a hotus you could use one of the point of view hats for head look as well but none of these have the finesse of true head tracking or true high tracking now you may be wondering what the benefit is of having both eye tracking and head tracking on the same unit well, head tracking gives you a much wider degree of motion and it is actually quite a bit faster if you're using the same uh, software settings that I'm using. So for the wider movements, you can use your head and for the finer movements, as you can see here looking down at the cargo canister for example, you can simply use your eyes. So when you look down towards a cargo canister, the camera will pan much slower or to much finer degrees. For wider camera movements, the sort of movements you'd particularly want in combat, you've got head tracking. So we can go and have a look at that. Jumping into here in a resource extraction site in one of the uh, system's planetary rings here, we can get ourselves straight into a bit of a fight and see exactly how that works. Now on the approach here, I'm actually using a little bit of eye tracking. The camera will pan slowly, but as I pass right under the ship there, I actually turn my head upwards and you get the wider camera movements. So, end of the day, it's all very, very natural. You simply move your head or move your eyes in the direction that you want the camera to pan in. And as we get involved in a bit of combat here, you can see exactly how that pans out for uh, aiding or assisting with combat. Like I say, it does give you much wider or much vaster situational awareness. At the moment, the target's right in front of me, so it's not too much of a problem. You may see the camera moving around a little bit, and that's due to fine head movements as well as the eye tracking, but again, as the ship passes above my cockpit, above my canopy there, 
I do move my head to keep track of the vessel. Now when I first started using the 4C, I did have to experiment with the infinite screen settings quite extensively before I found a setup that actually worked very well for me. You may notice sometimes when you jump in that the head tracking is not optimal, it may not always track your head, it can be a little bit glitchy and janky as you move towards the centre of the screen and it can sometimes glitch out as you look up towards the top of the screen. Now rather than this being a problem with the software or being a problem with the hardware, it is actually neither of these, it is all down to how you've set the software up. And I really cannot emphasise this enough. Now I've been using the 4C for quite a few months now and in that time I've seen a number of comments from people actually expressing how they're struggling using it or getting optimal performance out of the device. Now each game of course will be very different in the sort of settings that you actually want to use which is why the software allows you to set individual settings for each game. Now for head tracking here, speed is very, very important. You need to set it right up to the top here, because if you don't, you're going to notice that as you move your head, the camera is going to be panning far too slow for you to be able to keep track of any vessels. As you can see here, I can very easily keep track of any ship as they fly by. Inflection point, whether it's intended or otherwise, does seem to have a dramatic effect on how high you can actually look up. When it's set too high, when you look up, sometimes the camera will simply clip back down. So set it to 0.2 or maybe a bit lower and you'll find that the up and down pitching of your head will give you a much better control of the camera. And of course, there's the all important start point, which I mentioned earlier is the dead zone. I have that set at the default and you will find that the camera often clips when you move your head towards the center. So set that to zero to avoid that problem. Now it's not only your ship that you can use the uh, uh, eye tracking and head tracking in, you can also use it within your, both your SRV and your ship launched fighter and in both cases it does help immensely. Now again it's very much about situational awareness but not only that, increased situational awareness also does increase immersion. Now there's a number of places where I've found the, both the head tracking and the eye tracking to be very useful. In particular in the SRV when you're coming into bases here, you can actually look about to keep an eye on where units are as well as uh, base facilities, which of course means you don't have to rely on the radar quite as much as you might otherwise. I've also found the head tracking to be particularly useful when it comes to scooping up materials. And that's because just as everything else within the game, you can actually select your target by pitching your head or panning your head, looking towards what you want to target and then select it. You don't actually have to have all the targets centered in order to do that. And don't forget, if you haven't tried it already, you can use both the head tracking, head tracking in particular, as well as the eye tracking for racing through canyons or any other type of flight. And you've seen its use in combat, but again, the situational awareness is dramatically increased here. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them for you. A couple of other things I'd like to mention. If you don't actually have a Toby 4C already, and you do plan on getting one, check out the video description. There's a code there that will get you free shipping on a Toby 4C. And just so you know, in addition to getting you free shipping, if you do use that code, I will get a small amount of commission on any purchase made. And finally, Toby do have a competition planned where you can win a 4C for yourself. Do check out the link in the video description where you can find out more information. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.